Good evening, everybody. We are coming to you uh, from the NDTV newsroom. This is my colleague Ali, and I'm Basudha Venugopal. Uh, the passing away of Ibrahim Raisi, the former president of Iran, has sent shockwaves uh, uh, to the entire world. Now, Mr. Raisi has had a contested legacy. There has been a fight between the reformists and, of course, uh, the conservatives. But more importantly, what does this mean for the geopolitics of the Middle East that has seen many conflicts in the last few years? And also, what is it there? for India, why should India, uh, you know, why is the critical, uh, why is the succession plan in Iran so critical for India, uh, even even as the Chabahar uh, uh, right. plan seems to be, uh, you know, just uh, uh, right on the, you know, on, on the path. So joining us now is uh, former diplomat, uh, uh, Mr. Prabhu Dayal. Uh, um, Ambassador Prabhu Dayal, thank you so much for joining us and for speaking to NDTV. Um, sir, what very simply, uh, you know, put, what are the immediate ramifications of Ibrahim Raisi's death going to be like? Well, first of all, thanks for having me on your show. I don't see major changes either in, in Iran's internal policies or in its external policies. Let me explain why. The person who really calls the shots in Iran is the Supreme Leader. The, there may be a president, there are vice presidents, but it is the Supreme Leader who gives the directives in regard to internal as well as external policies. Now, the Supreme Leader continues to be there. And therefore, while there will be a change of president, I don't think this will necessarily imply that there will be any change in Iran's policies. Uh, let me also mention that uh, in Iran, there is a Guardian's Council. And that Guardian's Council uh, has the job of going through the profiles of different candidates and uh, deciding who will contest the presidential election. Now, in the last presidential election, which was held in uh, uh, 2021, there were many, many candidates. Uh, there were, I think, something like 592 candidates who had filed their papers. But only a handful were allowed. I think about seven candidates were allowed to contest. The others were ruled out by the Guardian's Council. Now, this okay. Guardian's Council comprises four clergymen mm. and four judges who mm. have Islamist leanings. So right. they eliminate a whole host of candidates and select those who will be acceptable to the Supreme Leader. Then okay. the Supreme Leader himself goes through the details of these candidates who have been passed by the scrutiny of the Guardian's Council and selects his favorite. So whoever will contest will be someone who is acceptable to the Supreme Leader. It's not going to be a candidate out of the flock, out of the blue. Okay. It will be somebody who is very much part of mainstream Iranian policy making. Right. Now, uh, let's not that what will this mean for Iran internally? I think yeah. uh, President Raisi was a hardliner. Yeah. He was not a moderate at all. His predecessor Amen. was a moderate, Hassan Rouhani. Mm -hmm. But Raisi was a hardline cleric. You know, when I was posted in Iran from 91 to 94, he was the chief prosecutor in Tehran. Yes. And even at that time, he had a formidable reputation of being a very hardline person. He prosecuted a whole number of people and sentenced them to death. Right. So that sort of attitude was carried on into his presidency. He was a hardliner. He uh, imposed very severe restrictions following the protest against the death. And uh, I think that policy will continue. The, the uh, moderates are not likely to come into the mainstream of uh, policy formulation. As I said, Hassan Rouhani was a moderate. He had he struck a nuclear deal with uh, the United States. But when Trump came in, he knocked out the nuclear deal. He abrogated it completely. So the uh, reliability of uh, the moderates in the role of policy making came down. They're not seen as people who can judge 
how things are going. So, as I said, it will be a hard line. Now, how right. will this impact relations with the Middle Eastern countries? Well, I think that Iran will continue to back the anti-Israel fronts, the numerous proxy players of Iran. They will continue to receive assistance because Iran cannot afford to let them uh, down. You know, it needs to support them. So the tensions in the Middle East are not going to come down. In fact, I can uh, visualize that they might even increase because Israel will see this as an opportunity to hit hard at Iran. Israel right. will see it as an opportunity to gain more influence in the region. So there right. is strong Iranian resistance. Now, what about India? I think the relationship with India is on a strong footing. I don't think that President Raisi's demise will see any major change in Iran's policy towards India. Uh, you know, Iran has been isolated a lot because of its uh, uh, of the sanctions that it faces from the United States. Iran's economy is very weak. Iran is not allowed to export um, petroleum uh, because it invites sanctions. China has been the biggest buyer. China has become the closest ally of Iran. But Iran wants to have more friends. So it is, it is building a relationship with India. It has allowed India to develop the Shahid Baheshti terminal in the port of Chabahar. And this uh, permission has been given for 10 years. You know, while uh, the agreement for the um, terminal, the Shahid Baheshti terminal, was signed in 2016 when Prime Minister Modi visited Iran, uh, but at that time, what was agreed on was that India would get control of this terminal on an annual basis. So, in other words, India would run it for a year and then the contract would be renewed. But this was not very attractive okay. for investors. It was not attractive for shipping companies, for instance, which did not see great stability in this arrangement. Now, the Iranians have allowed India a 10-year contract, so India will have a longer perspective and this is attractive for shipping companies okay. for developers and all others who want to indulge in you know trading activities and ship goods through Chabahar onwards to Afghanistan and Indonesia. So I think with India the relationship is poised to become stronger. In any case it will continue to be as good as it is at the moment. Yes, Ambassador. They all in in uh, the in during Mr. Ray, in, during President Raisi's time, we also saw Iran's influence on Hezbollah, Hamas, and who these grow. So, do you see the uh, you know do you see at some point the escalation of uh, uh, the conflict in the Middle East? Something you you just talked about, but do you how do you see that uh, growing, or do you think that there is a solution to that with the with a new succession plan in place? As I see it, the Hamas itself now wants a solution. The Hamas wants a ceasefire because uh, Gaza is being wiped out. Uh, the problem is that the terms of the settlement are not being arrived at. Um, Hamas wants that if there is any ceasefire, then it should be in perpetuity. Ira Iraq, sorry, Israel is not prepared to give that guarantee. Israel wants the hostages back. It says it will have a ceasefire, but Israel does not give any assurance of a permanent end to the war. So for this reason, there is a stalemate. But as I said, uh, my understanding is that uh, uh, Hamas wants uh, a ceasefire and an end to this war. It, it is prepared to return the, con the hostages. But of course, it wants Palestinian prisoners in Israel to be released. Yeah. And at the same time, it wants the war to be ended permanently. The resistance at the moment is coming from the Israeli side because it sees this as an opportunity to completely finish Hamas and to completely eradicate any resistance forces that there are for uh, uh, the Palestinian cause uh, and against Israel. Uh, sir, I would like to ask you that we have seen that PM Modi has expressed his sorrow to the Ibrahim uh, Raisi, and yesterday our foreign minister Mr. Jayashankar has also visited the Iranian embassy. So, what do you think? How the strong the relation between Iran and India will be strong, and what is the, uh, the effect of the uh, India and Israel or U.S. relationship? Also? You know, I think uh, 
know, India and Iran have always had good relations from uh, the times that the relationship was between the Indus Valley civilization and the Persian civilization. However, uh, there have been some problems on account of the manner in which the United States in particular perceives Iran. For this reason, we had to stop buying petroleum products from Iran because of the sanctions aspects. However, I think there is some understanding within uh, India and in our relationship with Iran that India will try and build the relationship as far as possible. And we do want a good understanding with Iran because it's a very important regional player. You know, Iran uh, is a country which matters. It matters not only in the context of the of the Middle Eastern politics, but it also matters in the context of South Asia. It is the immediate neighbor of Pakistan. And you know, there are lots of tensions between Pakistan and Iran. And there are some underlying causes. Uh, one of them, for instance, is the fact that Pakistan allows anti Iranian um, you know, actors, non-state actors who are militant in nature. It allows them to, to carry out militant activities against Iran. But even more significantly, the Shias in Pakistan are under constant attack. There are plenty of occasions when Shiite mosques have been attacked in Pakistan. And there is a lot of unhappiness um, in Iran for this reason where Pakistan is concerned. And you know, contrast that with the situation in India. In India, Shia mosques, Shiite mosques do not come under attacks. Shias are allowed to carry out their, uh, you know, marches and their uh, uh, <coughs> activities as it normally should be. So the relationship between Iran and India has no tensions. It has no right. rotten roadblocks. It has no obstacles, unlike uh, Iran's relationship with Pakistan. So I think that uh, the bilateral relationship which we have with, uh, with Iran is poised to grow. Of course, there is one major stumbling block, major obstacle, and that is the United States. Because the United States does not want that Iran's isolation should uh, end. It wants to keep isolating Iran. But of course, we have tried to follow an independent foreign policy, and we have tried to convey to other countries that we like to pursue our relations with Iran as we think should be in our national interest. And for this reason, we do not like to be advised by other countries how our relationship should be. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Dayal, for speaking to us and for your insights. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir.